All narrative essays are about one thing. Tell me a story. I'm happy to report that Dennis and his faithful dog Clark Kent are back for a new adventure and a look at narrative essays. This is Dorsey Pattison. I'm a children's book author and I do two things. I either write or I teach writing. Today we're going to talk about writing narrative essays. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about pre-writing. Then I'm going to read the book, My Crazy Dog, my narrative essay. Then we'll talk about the worksheets that are available for download for you to use in your classroom. Then we'll talk about how to extend the lessons um, to different age levels or different ability groups. Narratives are real or imagined stories. They involve characters who think, act, feel, and speak. Incredibly, by third grade, students are expected to correctly punctuate dialogue. And of course, a story implies a chronological order, so students must learn time words and transitions. One common question from teachers is how to teach students to elaborate. For me, as a fiction writer, the basic exercise of fiction is sensory details. What does the character see, hear, smell, touch, or taste? That's what will make your story come alive. Now, elementary opinion essays demand a lot from kids. In my professional development classes, I emphasize the importance of pre-writing. Students need a rich and diverse set of pre-writing exercises in order to write really well. As part of the Read and Write series, I set out to write an imagined narrative that could also serve as a mentor text for students writing their own narratives and it also serves as pre-writing for their essays. My Crazy Dog, My Narrative Essay by Darcy Pattison, illustrations by Eva O'Neill. Today, Mrs. Shirky said, you must write a narrative essay. A narrator tells stories, so a narrative essay tells about something that happened, real or imaginary. Last month, my cousin Melly and I got a dog and a cat. Crazy things have happened since I got my dog Clark Kent and my cat Barbie. Maybe I could tell about Clark Kent getting shots. I will try to remember about getting ready for the veterinarian. First, Clark slipped on the kitchen floor and spilled Barbie's cat food. Clark Kent needs his shots. Meow, clatter, crash. Shh, the baby is sleeping. Woof, woof. Wah, wah. Then he woke up baby Ruth. Next, Clark ran outside. Look out! He knocked over the bird feeder. No! Thunk. After that, he tried to jump across the fish pond, but he got wet. Stop! Splash! Finally, he tried to hide under the porch. Pant. We leave in 10 minutes. That's where I caught him and put his leash on him. We took Clark Kent to the vet and to get his shots. Click. Mrs. Shirky said, good writing means choosing the right details. Wow, I have a good memory. I have lots of great words and details to choose from. Here is my essay. My crazy dog. Clark Kent needs his shots, Mom said. Okay, I said, I will get the leash. When Clark Kent saw the leash, he ran. First, Clark slid across the slick tile in the kitchen and slammed into Barbie's food bowl. Crash, clatter, meow. The cat food flipped up and into Mom's bowl of chocolate chip cookie dough. Next, Clark clattered down the hallway. Come back, I yelled. Shh, Mom said. The baby is... Woof, 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 said Clark. Wah, wah, cried baby Ruth. Clark raced through the living room and straight for the door. He's going to crash, I thought. Instead, Clark burst through the curtain and out onto the deck. Right away, Clark jumped at a bluebird. Squawk. Clark missed and fell against the, the bird feeder. Thunk. Next... Clark raced to look at the orange goldfish in the pond. He fell in, and Clark Kent dripped water everywhere. I chased him. To get away, Clark leapt over the fish pond. Splash! His back legs landed in the pond. Now he was wetter than ever. Clark shook and shook. Then I was wetter too. 
Finally, Clark Kent trotted under the porch. I thought if I walked up and hid the leash behind my back, he couldn't run. Clark lay on the sandy dirt and panted. His fur was slick, muddy, and smelly. It was cozy under the porch. I pulled my dog into my lap and we looked out at the puffy clouds in the sky. It had been a good chase. From the doorway, Mom called, We leave in 10 minutes. I hosed off Clark. Also, I changed clothes. That's how we got Clark Kent to the vet's office on time. At the vet's office, I let Clark Kent sit in my lap so that the vet could look at him. The vet gave Clark three shots. I wanted to cry, but Clark didn't mind, so that was okay. On the way home, Mom said, After that chase this morning, it's time for you to take Clark Kent to obedience school. When I got home, I wrote an opinion essay for Mom about why Clark doesn't need obedience school. It didn't work. We start next week. As I said earlier, the basic exercise for fiction or narratives is the sensory detail worksheet. What did the character actually experience? Or for a real story, what did the person actually experience? I consider this exercise a word bank where writers deposit words into the bank that they can pull out later and use. Don't worry about complete sentences on this. Uh, words and phrases are plenty. Do notice that um, the feel here is temperature and texture, not emotions. It's not, I feel sad, but it's the slide is hot and it burns up my legs. While you might think sensory detail worksheet means lots of adjectives, that's not true. It's important to spend time teaching the kids to use strong specific nouns and verbs. Instead of the man walked across the room, you would write the man limped across the room. That one verb carries so much action and is a more specific visual of what's happening. It's a much stronger way of writing. Um, to teach the skill, one exercise that I often do is to have students stand along a wall then, uh, one by one, the students move across the room demonstrating a verb that's a synonym for walk, and the other students have to guess the verb being demonstrated. Um, adverbs or other modifiers can only be added after you've used the strongest verb and can't repeat what's implied by the strong verb. So you can't say, the man limped slowly across the room. Slowly is already implied by limping. Instead, the man limped noisily across the room. That lets the reader imagine the uneven footsteps. Strong fiction usually avoids the to-be verbs. Instead, work to find stronger active verbs. This may be a full day lesson for students just to get them in the, the, the um, habit of using strong verbs. Likewise, it's, it's good to take time to teach students to choose strong nouns, not this, my dog is funny, but this, my terrier jumps hoops. Notice that I also changed the to be verb there is um, and use jumps instead, much stronger and more specific and a lot stronger writing. Again, no modifiers or adjectives until the noun is as specific as it possibly can be. So you could have this, my fat terrier jumps hoops. If you look back at the story, We've made sensory details very important there also. You can see boxes on every page that includes the sensory details. Each sense is a different color. What you see is purple, what you hear is blue, smell is green, taste is pink, and orange is the floor. We're looking at page nine where Clark wakes up the baby. You can see there are no taste and feel um, sensory detail words on those pages. Uh, that's because there's nothing important in the story to taste or feel. You might talk about how the flowers or, or the dolls feel or taste. They really aren't important to the story. So you can't include every sense on every page, but it's good to try to include every sense, to push the students toward doing that whenever possible. The more variety of sensory details you have, the stronger the writing will be. When we write about it in the essay, it actually reads like this. Next, Clark clattered down the hallway. Come back, I yelled. Shh, Mom said. The baby is woof, 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 said Clark. Wah, wah, cried baby Ruth. If you compare that with the sensory details box on page 9, you'll see that the smell of baby powder didn't make it into the essay. You don't have to use all the sensory details that you notice. 
And in fact, what you're going to do as a writer is to select the best details. The Sensor Detail Worksheet is just to get you thinking in terms of what's possible. Spend some time comparing other sections of the story with the appropriate section of the essay to discover what sensory details are actually included in the story and which were excluded and talk about why some of the details are hard to write and why some are left out of the essay. While students fill out the sensory detail worksheet for the story they intend to tell, I walk around doing many conferences. Sometimes I'll tap a word on their page and say, make this more specific. If a student needs suggestions, I don't mind giving them a couple suggestions right there. It helps to model the skills and help them during the learning phase and the pre-writing phase. Already the narrative essay is on sound footing. With the sensory details deposited in this word back, they're going to have a really easy time using them in the essay. This worksheet focuses on the chronological order, the other distinctive of narrative essays. Um, for this, you can, uh, you can lead a discussion about what happened in the story. You can have students talk to each other and tell them about the story they're going to write and what happened first, next, etc. So it's a good speaking exercise time either for group discussions or for individual discussions. The worksheets include this final uh, worksheet for any other notes that the student needs to make about the story, things they want to be sure to include. Second graders are supposed to use dialogue in narrative essays and by third grade they must be able to punctuate dialogue with commas and quotation marks. To help students master this skill, in this book, all direct speech was put into a speech bubble. Um, here you can see Mother's Speech Bubble says, we leave in 10 minutes. If students become confused about what goes inside the quotation marks, teach them to draw it out and use a speech bubble. Uh, eventually they can do this mentally and not have to draw it out. But only what the person actually says goes inside the quotes. One good strategy to use at first is to give them frame sentences where the line is what the person actually says. Teach them to notice the quotation marks in the period or the exclamation and question mark, um, but give them something easy to start with. A story or a narrative also has a spatial sense to it. Often narratives are muddled because the student becomes lost in space. For some stories, not all, but for some, it'll be important to draw out a map. Um, and uh, so you'll have to decide if you want to use this handout page or not. If you do use it, especially for kids with lower vocabulary skills, it's great to ask them to put a finger on the map where the story starts, then move their finger to the next place in the story and explain what happened there. Continue until the story ends. If this is done orally, either one-to-one -one or as a group exercise, it's a great place to give kids vocabulary. For example, one time a boy was talking about fishing with his grandfather. I asked him, what kind of fishing pole did you use? He didn't have the words to explain it, the vocabulary. After gestures, I realized he was using a rod and reel. He retold that part of the story and used the words to describe his fishing pole. I went fishing with a rod and reel. The pre-writing is done. Um, you've already worked with the students on strong nouns and verbs, and those are in their sensory detail worksheet. They already have the vocabulary they need to write. They already know the correct chronological order. So now it's time to actually do the writing. The worksheet includes a sample organizational structure or outline to make it even easier. And the first draft should come easily. Depending on your goals, you can revise for A, more specific details, B, correct dialogue punctuation, or three, time order. I don't try to do all three of those at once. Um, only grade on how well they perform on one skill that's emphasized on this lesson. There's lots of ways to extend um, this story, if you buy the PowerPoint version of this book, it includes the vocabulary and context pages and information on the author or illustrator studies. Writing narratives contains many difficult skills. We hope you'll keep this book available and reread My Crazy Dog every time you work on narratives. If a student wonders about sensory details, time order, or dialogue punctuation, they can come back to that crazy story. The other books in the Read and Write series include I Want a Dog, My Opinion Essay, I Want a Cat, My Opinion Essay, and coming next year, My Dirty Dog, My Informative Essay. Look for the uh, companion video which teaches how to do opinion essays using I Want a Cat and I Want a Dog. Thanks for listening.